Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hello, my name is Glenn Close. <laughs> I hear the daddies fighting, they're fighting Liz Warden. And I ain't seen my Sunday Nick since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Meth Bay prison, time is dilated. But these guards don't know that these bars can't hold me in. I finally escaped from inside the doo doo zone. Tricked them all and busted out with my rat in tow. But I went back for some armor and passed out on the floor. I was 36 on Tuesday, yeah, now I'm 54. Don't seem right. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, Ooh. not a BDSM podcast, and we're back, baby. It's Freddy. He's back, baby. He's that man. <laughs> the voice that launched a thousand ships back at the top of the hour, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. My a name. Thousand riffs, dude. <laughs> nice. The natural order has reasserted itself. <laughs> Life finds a way. This is a Dungeons and Dragons podcast about four dads from our world flung into a world of magic and fantasy on a quest to rescue their lost sons. Along with their cool friend, Glenn. Along with their cool friend, Glenn. Me. That's me. Yeah, that's Glenn. Yeah. You still got to cuck yourself verbally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Freddie Wong. I play Glenn Close, the rock and roll buff bard of the group. Oh, my <laughs> God. That. Oh, yeah, that's right. Buff bard. Oh, man. The overleveled buff bard of the group. The buff bard. I hate it. Elder. The elder statesman. Wait, did he level up a bunch? Yeah. No, he didn't level up in jail at all, but his strength is increased a little bit. Wow. And it's yeah. one very specific circumstance. His strength gets plus one point. This week's Glenn Fat Glenn is no stranger to impersonators, pretenders to the <laughs> oh, throne, yeah. as it were. Mm -hmm. Back in our world, he had a three-year period where... Been there. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast over. Beth wins. Game over. Oh, there she is. The best podcaster <laughs> on the show. Uh, where he was locked in Mortal Kombat with a band called the... Ben Rose Christmas Quartet. Oh, no. <laughs> which played like Christmas classics in like an actual string quartet form. And he's like, this person's harsh in my bookings. So over the course of incredible sabotage, including like buying out the Ben Rose Quartet's URL out from under them so that it would redirect to his website and like all manner of shenanigans. Basically, let's just say the Ben Rose Quartet's mostly doing wedding gigs now and that the king of mall music reigns <laughs> supreme. Oh <my> <laughs> wedding gigs must pay more than mall music. I have no. to imagine if you're a top tier no. wedding band. No, you're absolutely. No, I'm sorry. No, because mm. <laughs> Jimmy, no, Jimmy, congratulations, Jimmy, by the way, a married man. Mr. Is Jimmy Wong. I thought you were going to be like, congratulations, Jimmy, a wedding singer. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Matt Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad who uh, became a barbarian upon entering this uh, magical world of adventure and danger and Ooh. spells and whatnot. <laughs> So a little quick dad fact. I was trying to get back to some domestic life for Daryl. It's been a while. So Daryl has gotten very good at bacon, those Chelsea buns. And it's because one day he was like, you know, those Chelsea boys, they've been so nice. Is I'm always there early in the morning. I've heard about the Chelsea boys in a while. Yeah, I'm going to make some Chelsea buns. He had realized that Chelsea buns are like sticky buns. He likes sticky buns. So one morning he spent all morning trying to make the perfect Chelsea buns. After a few batches, he finally got a good batch. He went to the bar. 
hung out with the boys. When he came back, all of his other batches were gone. And what had happened is Carol came back. She, every month, somebody's supposed to bring breakfast. And she's like, oh, my God, Daryl must have made these buns knowing I was supposed to bring breakfast to the work this morning. So now Daryl is stuck every second Monday of the month. He has to make Chelsea buns for Carol because uh, they were such a big hit. Oh, yeah. So he never let her on. No, no, no. Because nobody can know about the Chelsea boy. So he totally played along <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. This was for oh, you. I I'm so thoughtful. She can't ever know my boy's secret. <laughs> <laughs> also, I have a very quick dad fact because you guys didn't let me do a dad fact because you're all jealous about my beautiful baby girl. So, what, excuse me? So I have another dad fact really quick. So the second dad fact is just a little thing about Grant. Recently, when Grant wakes up, he takes a book from his shelf and he starts reading it. Oh, no, that's Dorothy, and she's only two, and she's already doing that shit. No. Just happened. My no. daughter's the best. This is amazing. Like, I'll own daddy on the internet someday. Me Page and my wife two. now are just watching the baby monitor, just watching our baby girl take a book off her shelf. She wakes up, grabs a book, sits back down, and Matt. is reading by herself. Listen, two years Matt, old. I've been on your side. I have been, like, with I'm you. So I happy. love babies. Amazing. Dot is incredible. So cute. This is where we go our separate ways. I cannot have you monopolizing the podcast with things that are like supposed to be about the podcast. The farther away you get from me, the farther away you're from the most perfect little human being on the planet named Dorothy. I'm just happy where I am. Don't worry about it. That's all. I'm a real dad. <laughs> okay, Matt. No, no, no. Real question. Does Dot genuinely understand what she's looking at at her age? Or is she just doing oh, it? Absolutely. Yeah, is she looking on the monitor being like, they think I'm so fucking smart right now. Oh, I know they're watching me. Oh, God. Like, how hard are you getting played? I, want to know. I mean, that'd be incredible. If she's trying to play us, that's like a whole level of intellect I couldn't even possibly imagine that, too. I mean, babies are brilliant. Like, I don't doubt that. Let us know when she's reading Infinite Jest so I can come over and explain <laughs> yeah. it to her. Oh, you'll know. She'll let everybody know when she's reading Infinite Jest. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Will Campos. I am the official voice actor for Henry Oak, the fictional character on the podcast Dungeons and Daddies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get straight to it. Henry is a crunchy, munchy, hippie, druid, nature, granola, rockin' Birkenstock, rockin' hippie, nature, druid dad. And this week, I got a little bit of notice on Twitter for something that happened in last week's episode, uh -oh. wherein... Henry was able to say that Frankenstein was his favorite monster while in the zone of truth, which led to a lot of questions about like, well, if he's in the zone of truth, how could he lie about Frankenstein? I thought Henry couldn't tell a lie. And so I thought I'd clear this up because my dad fact this week is the fact that the name of the monster is Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, no. All no. right. All right. What's the movie called? I never thought this would be how somebody gets canceled on our <laughs> podcast, but here it is. <laughs> What's the movie called where they make a girlfriend for Frankenstein? Is it called The Bride of Frankenstein's Monster? No, it's called The Bride of fucking Frankenstein. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Dr. Frankenstein isn't even in the fucking movie. Wolfman meets Frankenstein. <laughs> I'll stand with Will. Nowhere in the book does it clarify the monster's name, so nowhere does it specifically say he's not named Frankenstein. Don't use so Air Bud rules on this. So I believe that you <laughs> oh can absolutely gosh. agree. You can have two names. You can be the monster, your dad can be Dr. Frankenstein, and your name can also be Frankenstein, because people call you Frankenstein. Interesting. It's like the DeLorean, right? We don't say like, actually, it's DeLorean's car. DeLorean is the guy that made the DeLorean. It's a DeLorean. <laughs> Frankenstein's his surname, so he would take his surname. Yeah, I'd be like, please, Dr. Frankenstein is my dad. Call me Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein. yeah he's Adam Frankenstein, and it goes by Frankenstein. You know people in your life who go by their last name, yeah. you fucking liars. Let me ask you one question. Do you think the song Frankenstein by the Edgar Winter group is about fucking Dr. <laughs> Victor Frankenstein, or is it about the monster? You think the six synth wrists are referencing someone with a PhD? Fuck I off. I yield the remainder of my time. Hello, my name is Beth May, a.k.a. May, just my surname, a.k.a. <laughs> May's monster, which is uh, what happens when I get a little grouchy, a.k.a. the only legal Legal person allowed to play Ron Stampler. <laughs> Legally the only performer <laughs> of Ron Stampler. There is a bootleg illegal one that we do not speak of. I say it like Ron Stampler. <laughs> Emotionally detached stepfather and rogue. Fun fact about Ron this week. He never went on a honeymoon with Samantha, at least in any official capacity. He thinks that they've been on a permanent 
honeymoon because he likes honey and the moon exists. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so he'll make these references on like full moon nights when they're having like, I guess, honey or something on something. Like, oh, oh honey in the tea, eh? Love We're the still in the honeymoon phase. <laughs> I like how he's so lazy on the explanation of the moon. It's like, why is it called a honeymoon? Well, I like honey and the moon, uh, I mean, it exists. <laughs> so yeah, that's, yeah, it tracks. I love it. Also, just to peek behind the curtain really quick, just for the fans who are listening, there's nothing going on behind the scenes legally. I don't know why everybody's so paranoid about who could possibly play them Matt, or Matt, steal Matt, their identity. Matt. There's no deal happening behind the scenes. Zoe so. Deschanel is going to take over the part of Ron in a couple episodes. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Sorry, right. Beth. I didn't want you to find out this way, but you've been recast. I know. I know you guys have been looking for a quirkier woman. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> just not quirky yeah. enough. A real shoegazer. For some reason, Ron sings three times yeah. more. Fred he said he had a quirky woman friend. They're like, okay, as long as she's at least this quirky, she can be on the show. Uh, when they found out I couldn't play ukulele, they cut me off the podcast. <laughs> Ron doesn't roll dice anymore. Ron rolls ladybugs. All right, fifth wheel, go. I guess I was going to say, actually, you know, representation sometimes benefits you because I don't have a Zoe Deschanel to compare to me. Like, that just doesn't exist yet. Maybe I get to be Zoe Deschanel in my universe. You want to be the male Asian Zoe Deschanel? I don't know. Maybe for like a day at the very least. I feel like that doesn't wash off once you've made that your persona. <laughs> What's up, everyone? I play the fictional father, Jody Foster. Jody is a highway cop turned paladin in this universe. So Jody is a self-deterministic human being indeed. Uh, he had a lot of insecurities, though, about his nickname growing up and just his name in general. After all, he has the exact same name as the famous award-winning actor Jody Foster. <laughs> so he's tried writing it with a Y. He's done the old IE at the end. Freddie, as a real human, understands his pain. Oh, yeah. He's gone by Joe, Joey, Joe C, Joe B, Joe D, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. And then finally, Joseph worked, and he liked it. He felt like, wow, I'm getting some respect. I'm like an adult. <laughs> Most importantly, a girl liked him. How about, how about? Right? So that was the reason why Joseph Warwick. But uh -huh. canonically, Jody also, you know, is in a universe when Friends was like playing on the mm. air when he was growing up. And at one point, the character of Joey gets convinced by his friend Chandler that Joseph Stalin would be the right name for him to take to become a really popular actor. Because a name change is all an actor needed. And then Jody got mocked at school for being called Joseph because everyone started calling him Joseph Stalin. Wow. So he had to go His back kids really wow. to Plugged Jody. into Friends, yeah. <laughs> Damn, yeah. <laughs> Dude, everyone at the school watched Friends. It was just the show of the moment. Joe's like, why is everybody calling me Joseph Stalin? They're like, I guess you don't watch Friends. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> what? What's going on? He never watched Friends himself. He was just <laughs> subject to just belittling because of a show he never understood. Yeah, no one told him life was going to be that way. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your dad. Hi. Hi, Dad. Hey, Dad. So today, instead of a dad fact, I'm going to do a little new corner called Please Recommend Something to Me, Daddy, or Whoa. to shorten it, uh, Please Wreck Me, Daddy. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Love it. If you haven't played uh, like a jigsaw puzzle in a while, Ooh. there's I found them on Amazon. They're called Magic Jigsaw Puzzles or something like that. They're like a thousand pieces. They're obscenely difficult, but they're designed by like game designers and magicians. And there's an envelope inside the puzzle box that says, don't open this until you finish the puzzle. And apparently the jigsaw puzzles have twist endings now. What? So that's something that I've been working on. That's pretty cool. I'll let you know if the ending turns out that way. But I just want to let everybody know that that's a, oh, so you haven't done one yet. No, I'm like halfway through and it feels really good to put the pieces in somewhere mm -hmm. and feel like I'm actually accomplishing something in my life, something concrete that I can point yeah, to. Yeah, and go, Look yeah, what I've done. Meanwhile, yeah. I bought a child spirograph on Amazon the other day and I've had a great time with it. <laughs> 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 I love we just got the news story that millennials are having less sex than ever and living with their parents and Anthony's like I'm doing puzzles our generation just got to the age of 60 before anybody else faster than yeah. anybody normal millennial plays video games and doesn't have sex I got a vasectomy and I do jigsaws <laughs> come the fuck at me Anthony Birch life any percentage speed run <laughs> So the last time we left you, you were in the process of breaking Glenn close out of the meth based Supermax prison. Glenn had sort of simultaneously broken himself out, helped you with the fight against Elizabeth Warden, took off your face off boots, got you all of your gear back. 
and then crucially used his bardic inspiration to cause a riot in the Meth Bay Supermax. Jody, your son and Peyton are upstairs in general population, presumably uh, dealing with the consequences of the riot. And right when we left off, you had received a phone call from your lovely wife, Morgan Freeman. So would Glenn see the phone, like the caller ID on this? Probably not. Okay. You answer that, loser. (laughs) (laughs) Honey, what's going on? Uh, nothing. I was just checking in to see how the, the whole finding our kids quest is going. If everything's yes. okay, it's it's weird to do the timey wimey thing. Like I literally just hung up. I got to call you again. Like it's I don't know. I just how you doing? We are pushing through. It's the same as last time. Another hurdle, but we're gonna get through it, and we're gonna get our boy out safe. I promise. Okay. Do you want me to like not call you anymore? You sound like a little. No, 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 no. It just the current moment. Hey, hang it... up, man. We got a prison <laughs> ride to get through. Come on, Jody. Who are you talking to? We're in the middle. We, we, hang up. It's my wife. Oh, your wife. Oh, you that makes sense. You would have a, a yeah. Um, well, maybe we can walk and talk. Somebody had to make that kid. Oh gosh, so. I didn't even think about that. Oh, geez. Um Honey, they're babbling again. We have to get upstairs and we there's a lot in between us and our son and, and everyone right now, and we gotta help them out. So I I, I gotta call you back. Hey Jody, uh, remind me what your wife's name is again. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Morgan. <laughs> Glenn is getting more suspicious and more confused by the minute. Okay, Glenn, uh, a brief aside, my dude. Can you come here for a second? Yeah, what's up? Clunk, 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 clunk. Daryl, you come here too. Oh, I, okay, I don't want to leave Ron out. Hey, Ron, I, get over here. Yeah, okay. Jody, why don't you wrap up with uh, Morgan? Uh, we're going to just catch Glenn up to speed here real quick. Hey, okay, everyone. What the fuck's going on? Glenn, don't freak out, okay? We're all really happy to see you, and we're all here for you, and we all love you, and we all support you, but Jody is... Nick's new dad, and yeah. I'm pretty sure. What the fuck are you talking about? I mean, that's what the court said. Remember, they said they were going to send you to prison, and that you were going to be. The court say shit all the time. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Laws aren't real. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn, listen. I put my hands on shirt. Glenn, you're in prison, right? They said that would happen, and you that happened, right? Well, so they also said you're no longer going to be Nick's dad. Okay, so that did happen. But Nick is still here, so Nick needs a dad. So the dad that is now not you is that guy Jody. He's dad. He's Nick's dad. It was really confusing at first. Did something happen to Nick? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yikes. Um, listen, what the fuck? Let's leave on the go. I don't know how to fuck? tell you this, buddy. Um, it's getting me kind of choked up, but I'm just going to come out and say it. Your son sucks now. He's awful. <laughs> God. Oh, God. I lean in. He's a cop. Glenn grabs Ron by the collar and says, You say that shit to me one more time. As you grab Ron by the collar, Glenn, you feel a familiar feeling of something scaring up your chest. And the rest of you see a small rat sort of perch on Glenn's shoulder and then face Glenn and wave its arms in the air and go squeak, 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 like it's trying to calm you down. Oh my gosh, a little rat buddy. Who's that? Who's that little guy? He's got a little rat friend? What's that about? Sorry, you got a lot going on. I we're throwing a lot at you right now. <laughs> you have a rat? This is my boy. He helped me get out, right? I hold my fist for a little fist bump with the rat. Squeak. Aww. He daps you back. Oh, nice. <gasps> is he saying something to you? What? What is it? What's his name? Me and Nick Jr. here have an understanding. Nick, oh my God, that's so <laughs> sad. Oh no. Oh no. Daryl's getting really sad. Anyway, come on, let's go. What are we wasting time for? Jacking our jaws and talking on phones? We got prison ride to get through. Yeah, we'll deal with our feelings later. Let's keep going. <laughs> I gotta go. It looks like everyone's about to move. Okay. Love you very much, honey. Okay, smooches. Ugh. <laughs> Nothing worse than cutesy sign-offs on the phone. Come on, guys, let's get out of here. Just real quick, you know how this is a this is a prison, but it's also where they get a lot of work done, and it seems like the best uh, intersection between weapons and business is a prison uh, warden office. So I'm gonna go around here see if I can get any sort of weapons that might be weaponly. Ooh, is Ron gonna get a weapon upgrade? <laughs> I just want this letter opener, honestly. Ooh. Because <laughs> character, we got all of our weapons back, right? You did. Yeah, everybody has their normal stuff. And Ron has a letter opener. Okay, wait. Is there a way that I can get, like, not brass knuckles, but, like, what if, like, I fucking, like, cut the paper shredder in two and put the teeth things on my knuckles? And I was like, <laughs> I got shredder knuckles. Like Wolverine? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have to tape it on, right? Let's say... With the group of you here and all of your strength, it's more or less trivial to remove the teeth from the paper shredder. How are you going to fix them to your fist? Ron, here's some scotch tape over here. Yeah, it's just a big old <laughs> roll of double-sized scotch tape. Daryl, being a wannabe coach, quickly does sports taping and just freaking tapes those bad boys right to your knuckles. Yeah. You cannot hold anything now, though. Your hands are taped. No, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Right. The tape goes across your palms. Okay, yeah. yeah. Then that happens. You now have 
the worst bargain basement cosplay Wolverine claws humanly possible. <laughs> this is a thrill. Love it. How do they feel, Ron? <laughs> Sick. They're cold, a little cold. They're cold. Well, I mean, that's not on me. Go warm up with your hands. Okay. I'm just saying I'm pretty good at that Let's whole sports go. tape thing. Okay, fine. I grab the rock that says you're a shitty mom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I put that in my pocket, I'm just going to take this memento, <laughs> get a kid made for me. We'll talk yeah. about Spike. Like, at the very least, you know that it means something to her, so it's an insult on top of injury. Wow, dude. Okay. You don't know why I'm taking it. Okay, can we go? Let's bust out of here, okay, guys. We go. gotta get to her. Let's do it. We wanna go up to Gen Pop. We wanna go up one floor. As you ascend to general population, you see chaos a brewing. You see that all the cell doors are open. People, while they still have their face off boots on, there's nobody downstairs manning the stations. So they're just running around, just trying to beat on guards. The vomit bird is circling up high, looking down on you like, should I vomit? Should I not? And it's just sort of going around mm-hmm. in circles. There are guards being thrown off of the catwalks across the Panopticon. Hell yeah, dude. Why don't you roll perception or investigation to see if you can spot your kids in this mess? All right, all right, all right. Five plus four, nine. Yeah, you don't see shit. What about the others? <laughs> My visor's in the way. <laughs> 19. 19, nice. I got 17. I got a 21. Peyton! Dad boy! So when you say dad boy, a couple of people that are not Peyton <laughs> turn to look at you. But you also hear in the distance, daddy son! And you can see Peyton has a shiv and he's like slashing, but like at the air, like he and Nicholas are both being pretty much ignored. Peyton clearly wants to get involved in the fracas and Nicholas is just walking around with his hands on his hips going, you put him down right now. You put that, 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 that this is an officer of the law. And just like complaining and like oh looking God. really flustered and throwing up his hands oh, in frustration. No. There they are. Peyton, put that down, just hide. I'm assuming they can't hear us right now either. I'm sorry, Daryl. He heard Daryl's shout of Peyton, but you guys are on the opposite side of a floor basically okay. same floor yeah for simplicity's sake let's just say yeah are they in danger they are close to a bunch of people that are throwing haymakers and blades and doing a lot of stuff so they're certainly in danger from possibly collateral damage but nobody is targeting these two children because they look as harmless as harmless can be i had a character remind me how did dinner time start with a bird was there like a bell or something the guards went dinner time and then it just started okay so daryl puts his hands and he goes dinner time it's dinner time bird you look like you're wondering if it's dinner time and we're all pretty hungry that's why we got we're hang we're hangry down here that's why people are are getting angry so like dinner time (laughs) roll a performance Uh, about accurate to the performance i just gave it was an eight (laughs) (laughs) so the bird looks down at you and shakes its big old bingles as as like some debris like flies upward and the bird's like and like flinches backward from it it seems scared of coming down and vomiting glenn walks forward stunned into the fray looking up at the sun and being like, I, this is the first time I've seen. <laughs> like he's like looking at his hands in the sunlight and just like briefly mesmerized. You mean like Nicholas Cage and Con Air? Uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> you like feeling the breeze in your face, like smiling real big. Think about that bunny you're gonna take home to your son. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he's sitting there while all this is going around. Yeah. Joey's just gonna start barging ahead uh, and like looking at Daryl, being like, "You're the biggest guy here. Let's Darryl go." Gets in like, front. Kind of grabbing yeah. his hand and pulling him because I need the body. The moment you grab my hand, I like kind of like a toddler, like I, I can walk myself <laughs> <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> And I, yes, I create a barricade. I start running in front of you. I notice them pass me, and then I want to get behind and also, like, help push through to wherever they're headed. Okay. Give me a strength check, Daryl. With my left hand. Yes, okay. With Because since you're pushing on Daryl with your left hand, that means, Daryl, you get advantage on your strength check. Ooh, I think I do anyways Whoa. as a big boy barbarian. Oh, sure. Double advantage. D- 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 double. Here we go. That's a 18. So with an 18, you manage to barrel a couple of convicts out of your way. They fall to the ground. As you clear past them, you get next to Payton and Nicholas. And a guard that is thrown from the floor above you, like, lands between you and them. It immediately speaks into her gauntlet and goes, the new ones are loose. They've got all their gear I'm just going to keep running. I run straight into, like, Stiff I don't stop. Go ahead and give me another strength roll. See if you can knock her out of the way entirely. Oh, 21. Whoa. Oh okay, yeah, you just, like, boom, and, like, bounce her away like you're a video game character, basically. She just, bow and, like, flies off to the side. So I go, thanks for the clear, Daryl. <laughs> Good thing we practiced this earlier, right? And I strut up to Nick like I've been planning this for years, and I hold my arm out. I'm like, what's wrong, Nick? Pushing too many pencils? And I hold out, expecting a predator high five. So as you raise your extremely buff left arm to do a predator high five to Nicholas, he uh, just looks at your arm and then to your eyes, and then like with a squint and a shrug, he goes, "What are you? What are you doing? What is this? P- predator? The movie? I haven't. Se- I don't. I haven't seen the that movie. What do you mean? We that was like our favorite movie. It was like uh, a Friday movie. It's, uh, it's rated uh, R, and it's not about the military in a positive light. So <laughs> my dad and I don't watch it. 
Oh, I literally no. stagger back as if I've been hit oh, no. by like a thousand That's punches at once. That's sure. psychic oh, damage for sure, yeah. I think. Yeah, right? Roll a d6 of psychic damage. I can take two damage psychically, and I finger tut to Payton. Give it to me straight, P-Man. What's actually going on here? And he finger tuts to you. Peyton, you can just speak out loud. We're all here. I, we, we, Glenn, just look. We should all talk this out. Don't listen to him. <laughs> just finger tutting. We're in the middle of a prison ride. Why don't we have finger tut conversations? Yeah, yeah, just, don't Peyton, listen just to speak him. out loud. You're the only person Peyton, I can trust. Peyton, son, don't, don't finger tut. He says, I did learn finger tutting just to not use it. And then he finger tuts <laughs> to you. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a shock. I know. But Nicholas, and this takes a while. He goes by Nicholas now. He's he been raised by this other guy, by Jody, and he's different. He's kind of a dark. He wears like khakis. Daryl picks up Peyton and stands in front of him. He's like, Peyton, for God's sake, just speak out loud, please. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yes, Nicholas is the son of Jody Foster. This is Nicholas Foster. And as you could tell, the douche apple did not fall far from the shit tree. <laughs> oh Payton. What? I called him like I, I mean, see him. Payton, that's no, rude. I, no, I, I'm not me. saying I disagree with you. It's just rude. It's Nicholas rude. Nicholas is like, how dare you? What are you talking about? He wouldn't even let me give him a shift. That's how much of a dark this boy is. I thought he would make me a target. I'm going to grab <laughs> Jody by the collar and pin him up against the wall. Oh, shit. I'd be like, who the hell are you? Well, okay, first of all, Jody, are you going to... Yeah, I can hear it right when he finally says it yes. out loud, but it doesn't tell me much, so I'm just very confused. So I don't think I actually oppose what happens here with Glenn. Okay, great. Ron looks around and says, Hey, could you guys give us the room? We've got some, uh, <laughs> some fatherly issues to hash out. Roll intimidation with disadvantage. Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> Six. An elbow <laughs> hits you directly in the face, Ron, and your nose breaks. Oh, oh no. Daryl looks for who swung that elbow. It's a very large guard in a very large suit of armor. I say, okay, you know what? That's enough. And then Henry casts Wall of Fire, which allows me to cast a 60 foot long, 20 foot high, and one foot thick ringed wall of fire. Whoa. And so I'm just going to put up like a wall of fire between us and the rest of the rioters and be like, this is our conversation zone. This is a <laughs> private room. We're not part of the riot. You just turn this into a fight. Bit. <laughs> we what just, do you mean conversation You just zone? turned this into the octagon. <laughs> yeah, if it's a 60 foot radius <laughs> ring of fire, then you have definitely included the guard that, that no, just elbowed no, it, no. Ron. <laughs> no. At He's least thinking. three inmates. I can make it as big as I want. So I put up a thing between us and everyone else. I say, this is a private zone, okay? okay. This is just for okay, us. So really quick, conversation. really quick. I have an insane reference here. Has anyone played the game Jez Ball? No. Yeah, when you make the wall split to separate the balls. Oh, Jez Ball. Yeah. And you have yeah. to like put a wall to split oh it. Oh my God, Jez yeah. Ball. Wow. So I what you're saying well. is that you are playing jazz ball with this wall of fire to only encompass the balls in this corner, which is us. I don't like, I feel like you got to roll for that. That is so specific. We'll should play a round of jazz ball to see how many guards get within the thing of fire. <laughs> Will, do you have easy access to jazz ball? Jazz ball, free web arcade. Should I record my screen? How do I do this? <laughs> no. Will is now sharing his screen for an online version at freewebarcade.com for the game Chess <laughs> Ball. So and it just says not secure next to <laughs> <laughs> the domain. It like, looks like an old Flash game almost. I'm amazed that this isn't filled with bad ads. All right, here we go. 30 seconds later. Will's about to fail right now. He's I'm one so life stressed left. out. You guys got to give me a fucking break. <laughs> Oh Stop! You only got to level two! You couldn't even get the level three balls! Fuck you! Fuck you! Henry spell works by rolling a dice, he not by playing a really fucking hard. video game! Anthony, how many guards are in with us? Alright, so you got one big ass guard, the one that elbowed Ron in the face. And then you've got another guard that came over when they saw the flame thing going around and goes, hey, it's just like a dust ball, and then walked in. And there are also two other convicts that are standing around. So you have two guards and two convicts, and then all of you inside your ring of fire. I turn to the other guards and I say, I was trying to make this a private conversation space, so if you guys could just respect the conversation we're trying to have, we'll riot with you and fight you in a moment. Roll a persuasion with disadvantage. Can Daryl help? Uh-huh. Can Daryl help? He's like, back up. These two prisoners are throwing down. They don't even care about the guards. You don't want to get in the middle of those two fists. No, no, no. Remember, guys, I look like a guard right now. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. I think that was. Well, beautiful. we're gonna undo that entire thing because so you look like a guard holding up a yeah a prisoner. No, oh, I go, they probably uh, say so. Oh, that guard looks like he needs backup, and they're rushing yeah. over to Glenn's side. Yeah. To wit, I um I got a six on my persuasion, so they are not going to stop fighting. You grab Jody by the neck, and they grab Jody by each shoulder, and they go, Yeah, yeah, we got you. Stop rioting. I'm still staring down Jody, waiting for a response to my initial. 
question. Who are you? Glenn, I'm Jody. What do you want? What did you do to my son? My boy, my boy. Look what they did to my beautiful boy. <laughs> what? Nicholas? So when you say Nicholas, he turns like, you don't have a son? What are you talking about? You're a weird friend that hangs out with us. <gasps> I go, yeah, and I take Jody's body and I want to hurl him at the two guards near us like a bowling ball into a bunch of bowling pins. Go ahead and give me a strength check. This will tr- I have to try and impose because this is too much movement. Okay. Are you sure you don't want Jimmy and Freddy to play a round of Tekken Tag Tournament too? Because apparently <laughs> we're playing video games to do everything now. Don't be mad that you literally <laughs> lost on the second level of Jez Ball. <laughs> oh, shit. We just had two very good rolls. I rolled a 14 plus 6, 20. I rolled a 14 plus 7, 21. <gasps> oh, my oh my goodness. I feel like Jody watched an Aikido demonstration or a Judo demonstration at some point. And so then he flips me into the other guards. <laughs> yes. He uses your momentum using his momentum against you, against him. It becomes a double twist. He watched a Judo demonstration and you watched that episode of Cowboy Bebop where Spike just says, be like water. And now the kid can fucking flip someone over. Like, what was that about? <laughs> Am I right? Any Cowboy Bebop fans? <laughs> <laughs> so, Freddy, you take 2d8 of damage as you slam into these armored guards Whoa. and you knock them down prone. Dude, Aikido fucks. What? He's a big boy now in a big suit of armor. Ooh, seven damage. Okay, so you take seven damage and you knock these two to the ground. And the guards, they're in a zone of Jezball fire, so they go like, oh, it's on now. And Glenn is basically pinning them down because he's on top of them. What are you going to do now? I'm going to run at Nicholas and I'm going to yell, let's go. I'm going to pick him and Payton up and like, gesture to everyone's like, grab Glenn, let's get out of here. You grab Nicholas and he happily takes your hand. You try to grab Peyton's hand. And he's like, ew, and like pulls away from you. He's like, I'm next to you. It's fine. Daryl's running to Glenn and out of the corner of his eye, he sees Peyton like, you know, disregard uh, Jody and he kind of taps on his back. And like, I feel like Peyton instantly knows the signal and just leaps onto his back for the piggyback ride. Yeah, great. For sure. I lean down to Glenn and say, Glenn, I promise we're going to explain what's going on, but we got to get the hell out of here for your sake and Nick's sake. We need your help, man. You look like a guard. Help fine. out. Fine. And I stand up uh, and there's two guards still here with me still right yeah they are on the ground prone but you've just gotten up so they can stand up as well so i'm gonna tell them in the performance voice i'll be like i'll take care of these losers the warden needs your help all the way down in level negative two is where you all need to get there now all right roll deception oh yeah i'm shaking my boots is that helping Glenn? i'm shaking my boots <laughs> daryl it doesn't you're not they know you're not one of them because oh. they're slime guys remember oh, and you're right, sorry. i backhand daryl to shut him up <laughs> what's your unarmed attack damage <laughs> two damage okay so daryl you take two damage to your face to my face <laughs> So 25, 11 plus 14. Why are we even bother? Yeah, that'll Jeez. do it. But you get plus 14? Yes. Unless you get a one. Okay. With a 25, they go, oh, absolutely. And they happily run through the fire because you were <laughs> so goddamn persuasive. <laughs> and, and they go, ha, ha, ha. I think that Ron is quietly singing Ring of Fire. This is the <laughs> Ring of Fire. Mesmerized. He's like, I thought I would make this the wholesome prison blues. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Ron, you get inspiration. <laughs> Ron gets inspiration. <laughs> Not bad. Ron got it. That's fantastic. <laughs> Glenn takes a second, collects himself, and says, <sighs> How are we getting out of here then? You guys scope this place out? Uh, I mean, no, we just got sent here. I don't know if they usually don't lead the prisoners through the ways that would be easy to get out. Oh, I got an idea. Henry turns into a big bird. All right. Fuck yeah, let's fucking do it. <laughs> but hold on, we're out of character. I want to point out that I've listened to this podcast. The original fairies said they couldn't get you close to fly because you would get shot down. So presumably you being Ooh. a bird and going away, you're still getting mm. shot down. Right? Good point. I just saw so many people repeat that like online where they were like, yeah, he, Henry just turned to a bird. It's like, yeah, you get shot down immediately. Yeah, like Mordor. Oh, 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 why don't the eagles just drop the ring? Like that big eye wouldn't notice eagles coming. Fucking stupid. <laughs> Matt. Who's the biggest plot hole in history? Sh- sh- shut the fuck up. What have you written? Ding. <laughs> Ding. We need to have a talk about you and the eagles, man. We need to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to let it go, dude. <laughs> They're wrong. They're wrong. Not that many people but actually it's care. it's wrong for you to be this obsessed about them being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. All right. Well, unfortunately, uh, Henry did not hear Glenn point that out until after he turned into a big bird. So Henry <laughs> is still a big bird now. Great. The big bird flying around, though, is still hanging out, right? The poop bird. Uh, it's not poop. It's food. Sorry. <laughs> the food bird is up top, still circling around nervously, not knowing what it should do. Yes. I yelled to Henry like, Henry, can you talk to it? Oh, me, yeah, that's a good idea. I could try. So I'm going to cast, man, I'm just going through spells like John Wick throwing guns around right now. Boom, boom, boom. That's what he does. <laughs> yeah, generally well known for throwing guns is John guns. Wick. <laughs> You're telling me he doesn't throw a gun at someone in one of those John Wicks? Come on. If they didn't make a scene where he just has a bunch of empty guns and he just throws them at people, that's where the fucking <laughs> franchise needs to go. You know what? I do not have speak animals 
prepared right now, so Henry cannot do that. <laughs> um, Wait, why can't you? You can't just be a Swiss Army knife of all your spells. Yeah. You gotta prep them first, and Henry oh. didn't think he was gonna need to speak to any animals. Well, that seems kind of dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's the game part. It's a long-standing D&D debate. Put out your fire first so we could move out of here. I feel like we're stuck in a ring of fire. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then Henry the bird, please. claps his feathers and uh, turns the <laughs> fire off. Guys, what do you know about how to get out of here? Uh, d- what direction did we come from? Holy shit, I want to ask Payton if he knows any Thing about how to get out of here. <laughs> All right, baby. So here are the possible ways that you could get out of here. We came in through the south, but there was a lot of guards at the checkpoints, and there was a gelatinous cube that was taking weapons for people. Gelatinous cubes, if you don't know, kind of a big deal, kind of difficult to kill. To the west, there's a trash chute that seems to go through an incinerator. It's like a little mine cart. You put the trash on it, it gets incinerated, and then it gets dumped out in the ocean. Apparently, somebody did that. They got out, but they died. I want to turn to Jody. I'm going to say, that incinerator shoot I know about. Have you seen the movie The Rock, Jody? I thought it was kind of... Uh, whatever. What? <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. I did the Sean Connery thing. I heard it from uh, someone who was uh, locked up with me. You just have to, like, run through it, and, like, I'll tell you the timing. You go first and clear the way for us. <laughs> Wait, hold on. How long ago did you talk to this person? Oh, roll persuasion. That is... Deception, my friend. Deception. Uh, 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 he was the guy who was locked up with me, and that's how he got out. Yeah. Yeah, Glenn, we heard about that guy. That guy died. Somebody Gah! came out. Glenn, make your roll. And then, Jody, you will roll opposed insight. So my deception roll was a 7 plus 14, 21. Oh, my God. I got an 18. Jody, yeah, you die. As far as you know, he's telling the truth. Okay, well, we'll all factor that in. I, Ron Stampler, actually realized recently upon looking at my character sheet that I uh, am immune to flames. And what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm probably not immune to flames. I remember reading something today and I was oh, like- Oh, because you specced as a tiefling, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, shit. Yeah, tieflings are immune to flames, I think. Hellish resistance. <laughs> Hellish resistance. Fire resistance five, so as long as the source of fire damage can only do five or less, they're functionally immune to it. Ron once attended a work retreat that had the walk on coals thing. Yeah, Will, baby, you and I were on the same page. I fucking knew it. He attended a work retreat, and it's like one of those ones where like they actually don't heat the coals up that much, but so yeah. everyone thinks they can get through, but somehow Ron like absorbed the like mental energy to be able to do it. <laughs> Daryl goes up to Glenn. I'm like, Glenn, that seems like the best way. I don't know what the hell you're talking about with fire. Talk to a guard. Tell him, use your freaking authority or whatever as you did. Every time you talk, you deceive me, even though I know who you are. It's so impressive. Every time you talk, I'm like, oh, he's a real guard. So tell a guard to go turn off the furnace and let's just get out of here. Ooh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to, that's, that sounds like a good a idea. dad asking about the temperature in a jail. <laughs> yes. God help you if you touch the thermostat in this oh, jail. no, the thermostat. So I'm going to find the nearest guard and tap them on the shoulder and say, Oi, the warden told me we need to turn off the furnace. How do I do that? So the guard looks at you and goes, I rolled a 91. <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. I tried, everybody. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> he got nutted by his own uh, nunchuck. Yeah. So oh, no. the guard turns to you and says, oh, that's easy. Just, and then pauses. And like, even though it's just a gelatinous blob inside, you can feel it squinting at you. And then before you can react in any way, it grabs your helm and just rips it off, revealing your human meat face. With a little rat on my head. With a rat on your head, uh, pulling on your hair is like ratatouille. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the rat puts his hands over its eyes and it's very cute. That instinctively pulls me to draw the sword and just stick it into this guard in front of me. This electrified sword. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack. Oh my god. Ooh, 6 plus 7, 13 to DC. Okay, uh, that's not gonna do it. Too close range. Yeah, too close range. It comes out <sighs> of the, your hilt and like the pommel of it like strikes it in the stomach because you're that close. And immediately the guard speaks into his thing and goes, Glenn Close is in here! He's dressed as one of us! It starts panicking and starts running away from you to try to get more guards to come and fight you. <laughs> I turn around I go, well normally that worked. That worked like pretty well for most of this. So I guess I guess we got we have to figure out another way out. What about the, uh, the, the bird? Here's my son. Thought, gentlemen, and then Henry turns from being a bird into being a big spider. I turn into a giant spider, which is a thing I can do. <laughs> and Ron's like, ah! Yeah, like, turns away, he's like, you gotta warn us before you do that, Jesus. man. Oh my god, Christ! Oh, oh shoot, I'm sorry. And he's like, yes! Are you guys arachnophobic? I'm sorry, I should have given you a heads up before. Oh, jeez. Henry, like, takes one of his spider legs and, like, rubs over his, like, eight eyes. Oh, it's even worse, because he's got eight eyes. Oh, it's all good. So, uh, Henry still has eight Birkenstocks on his Oh my god. Like, still has eight Birkenstocks. Every leg is covered in a condom. Uh, <laughs> he had eight? Before I'm so- okay, whatever. <laughs> Don't think about it. 
it too hard. Anthony, here's what I'd like to do. I feel like as a giant spider, I can climb up walls. Yes. And then what I'm thinking is some of the people can ride on me, and then I can also weave a sticky web that perhaps the rest of the party can climb up to get out the top of the prison. Mm. That makes perfect sense to me. How big is the spider? Giant spider? It's like, you know, five or six inches. It's a, it's a, it's a tarantula. <laughs> Wait, five or six um, inches? That's, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a giant spider is a large beast. And it has a 14 strength, if that's important. Okay. If you want to climb, you can determine how many people you want to be on your back. And then depending on who they are, how big they are, and how many of them there are, that'll modulate the difficulty of the strength check to hoist them up. Anybody climbing up your web, do you just like automatically make web? You just say, hey, I make some web, or is it like a roll or anything? So like, I assume I can weave a web. That feels like something that a big spider could do. Yeah, it sounds trivial for you to do that. So anybody climbing the web will just have to make, uh, I guess, a... Athletics? Yeah, athletics or acrobatics. Pretty easy one um, to climb up. Okay, kids, hop up on my hairy spider back, and uh, everyone else follow my web that I secrete from my glands. <laughs> Glenn shudders. Okay. I'm gonna take Nicholas and throw him up onto the back. As you throw up Nicholas, he's like, oh, no, I don't... Ugh. And you throw him up trivially and he lands on the spider. He's like, oh, ooh, 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 and is like raising up his hands and stuff like that and panicking like, oh, gross, 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 gross. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. And Glenn goes, so some things are the same. <laughs> <laughs> and then Payton climbs up. He's like, this is the best thing in my life. I love spiders so damn much. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go, baby. And he slaps you on the butt. <laughs> spider butt. <laughs> Henry bucks like a horse and goes like whatever a spider says instead of nay. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you just hiss a bunch. Yeah. And then uh, I start scooting up the wall and tooting out a web. All right. Hate it. Yeah, I actually hate it. <laughs> Daryl's just watching this, just upset. Just like, <laughs> yeah. what's happening? Glenn's standing next to Daryl and just kind of watching as this happens. It's like <laughs> these two kids climbing <laughs> up in the back of the spider. Just like, yo, oh, this is a pretty wild journey so far, huh, Daryl? <laughs> yeah. This is a lot. I could scurry up to the ceiling and then like drop like a silken thread down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, just drop one big dookie. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then pull it up with your butt muscles. Spiders can pull back their web, right? <laughs> Henry Oak does that yoga, so he's got those extra butt muscles. Yeah, just spi webs, spiders can. Spider kegels. He does spider kegels. Yeah. Oh, God. This is awful. This is awful. Because spiders can retract the web after they let it out. I don't know. Can they? No, but they're crawling back up the like structural integrity of their own web. So it's like they're not <laughs> like eating the web with their ass. They're not ass eating it. Yeah, they're not yeah. re. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, they're not like on. one of those vacuums that you press the button and it retracts <laughs> no. the cord. Like no, yeah. it's when you're up there, you could pull it up with your spider arms. You well, he uses okay. spider arms. Yeah. He could just like keep walking with it, dangling out of his butt and tighten his butt and just start yeah. like pulling you this up that is way. So awful. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, oh, Jerry. Boy. I'm sorry. No, this it's cute. So as you climb up to uh, the top, you see the vomit bird is there and it begins to take a sort of defensive pose as you get near it. This bird's going to eat uh -oh. your ass, dude. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no he's what a big spider. What do birds do? Birds eat bugs. They do. Yeah, but it's a huge spider. It's a huge bird. Bag, how big? Now we need sizes. Now I need, I need to understand it's this. It's big enough to pluck out one of your eyes with a To beak. fight a spider. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be like a little mini Godzilla fight. Yes, it's going to be a little kaiju fight. If if you can not convince this thing that you're peaceful, mm. is there anything you'd like to try to do to convince it? Um, yes. I uh -huh. can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to like just kind of cower from the bird. And like I, you know, I'm just like, ooh, don't hurt me. <laughs> Like, I'm like, I'm like, I put up my hands like I, I come in peace. Can we pretend that Ron was also? I feel like Ron would yes, have Ron's wanted tiny to. Enough that, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So wait, 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 Beth, but make a stealth roll and then it's just Ron snuck yeah. on. Yeah, Ron has just been there. I think you have to roll stealth to decide if you're still Ron's Ron. on the underbelly. Yeah, stealth. yeah. That's really okay, good. I'm gonna roll stealth. You guys are just trying to trick me into playing D&D. I got a 20. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. There it is. Look at that. Ooh. When Glenn said, uh, Daryl, like, this is quite an adventure, I go, yeah, wait a second. Is Ron up there? <laughs> this camera punch zooms in. Henry is in the middle of cowering, <laughs> and then I go, oh, don't hurt me. All right, I mime, oh, don't hurt me. I see that. You're a bird. I'm a spider myself. Uh, some would say that we're enemies, but I find that in the world of business, all is fair. Um, so do you like what you do throwing up on people? Roll 
persuasion. I would like to assist the persuasion role. Once I realize that Ron is talking and trying to be this spider, like I start like puppeting like what Ron is saying. So like, I'm like trying to act like Ron as a spider. I feel like the bird could only read that as attack. I'm going to burn my inspiration. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, nice. I got a 10, by the way, for my assist. Okay, so your assist does nothing. I got an 11. Well, now hold on. Everyone heard me say ready for the big ride baby. So you can burn a bardic inspiration right here and add a 1d10. Ooh. So before you know the result, you can... Add a 1d10 to that 11 roll right now. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and roll a 1d10, Beth. Maybe I will. Yeah. <laughs> Is it 1d8? No, I, I fucking leveled up, my dude. Um. God damn it. Three. All right, so you got a 14. Mm -hmm. So the bird cocks its head at you, and then it pecks out one of Henry's eyes. Oh, my <laughs> God. We can't have two characters with the eye patches on this He's show. got eight. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll see what happens when you change it back, I guess. Oh, no. So, yeah, it does 27 damage. Does it have to roll against my AC or something? Like yeah, I got a 20. Okay, then it plucked my eye. So out. now it's going to do uh, Talons. So just so you know, this thing gets plus 13 to hit. Oh, that's not good. No. So that was 27 damage, you said? That was 27 damage from its first attack. Uh -oh. It makes two per turn. Oh, God. And it is going to hit you with its talons Jesus. for 23 damage, and you're grappled. So it plucks you off of the wall and just has you wriggling in its talons as the kids try to hang on to the micro hairs on your back <gasps> as you dangle there. Until it grapple ends, you are restrained, and it can't use its talons on another target. I do not mean to panic anybody, but I currently have seven hit points. So How? <laughs> oh. Anthony's trying to tell us we cannot do silly shit anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> I started because I got damaged in the fight with Elizabeth Warden, and I didn't get time to heal myself. Oh, so He, he just took right, like 50 yeah, yeah, damage. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he took a lot of damage right shit. there. That's a big bird. So just to be clear, Peyton... Nicholas and Ron are all hanging from the spider who's hanging from this bird. Yeah. Yes. And we watch them dangle, right? We can see this okay. happening. Yes. And I feel like the web works the way it does in cartoons where it's like also symbolically like poop when you're nervous. Like it's just getting longer and longer coming out of your butt as this thing is like okay. grabbing you and shaking you around. <laughs> I go, hang on, Nick. And I'm going to run and try and grab this dangling web. Go ahead and give me an acrobatics check or a dexterity check, whatever you feel like makes sense for that. Eight plus eight, 16. 16. You get it easily. You got the web in hand. You can start climbing upward. What are you going to do? I'm going to start climbing. What does Jody do? I'm curious. Well, how much space is there between? How higher up are they? Yeah. So let's say that after the bird grabbed you, you started to like weigh it down a little bit. So it's descended. So you're basically like two stories up. Okay. I'm going to, can I run around the corners of the place? Is that possible? Is there yeah. another ladder to climb up that I don't have to go up? Yeah. There's an elevator in the center and and yeah. It's like the Guggenheim. The whole thing is just one big spiral. Yeah. yeah it's one big spiral. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. You can do that. Um, why don't you roll athletics to just make sure that you get up there like, <gasps> you're you're like Will Smith in Men in Black at the beginning of the movie when he runs up the Guggenheim. Like Will Smith, that's so cool. I'm running up as well. Okay. All right, I got 23. Okay, great. I got 24, so I started right behind Jody, and then I end like a few steps in front of Jody. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And both of you are just barreling people out of the way as you run up <laughs> the spiral staircase around the center of the Panopticon, around the spoke, essentially. And I'm climbing up as well. Yes. You're close enough to now grab onto the spider itself, onto Henry itself. The others who ran up the staircase, you are on the same sort of level as the spider itself. So you could like hypothetically like dive off and jump onto and grab the spider. Everybody give me your initiative and I'll type it in and I won't talk for a little bit because I have to move away from my moves mic. moves away from his mic to breathe. He, he moves away from his mic to write down everyone's initiative. All right, everybody read them all out when you are ready. I have the list here. Uh, Glenn is a nine. Daryl's a 14. Henry's a 13. Jody's a 21. And then Ron is a 14. Henry's a six, but he cleans up to an eight. Nice. Incidentally, I just realized, so the name of this large bird in Dungeons Dragons, this is a real Dungeons Dragons creature. It's called Rock, as in the rock. What? Oh, um, Damn. What? what? You could have told me that before oh I tried to fuck with it. Damn. <laughs> it unfortunately got a natural 20 for its initiative roll, wow. so it's going to go first. So all it has is its beak and its talons, and it cannot use its talons while it's holding on to Henry. So it's going to use its beak to try to snap at Glenn as you climb up. So it's going to do 26 damage to you. Does the armor absorb anything? The beak specifically does piercing damage. So ah. you feel the hard chitinous beak of this rock penetrate the armor and then your chest, your extremely buff 50 year old flesh. Since its beak is like punched through my armor, can I like grab onto its neck? And like, let it pull me up. So go ahead and get me a strength check and then add one to it because you have a strong left arm. Uh, 16. Yes, the 16 will do it. 
So you climb onto like its neck or you just sort of grab on and just pray. Well, it's like its head's right there. So I'm just going to like grab onto under its neck. And then as it lifts up, it's going to carry me along with it. Me and my big left arm. Okay, sure. Jody, it is your turn. Just to clarify, in front of me is an ROC holding on with both claws to a spider. And they're closer to the ground now, right? You said they are. They are two stories above the ground. They're 20 feet off the ground, essentially. Hmm. Probably a little higher. Unless it's like really low, 10 foot tall ceilings. Anthony's probably closer to like 26 feet. Okay. Like that. They're about 35 feet off the ground. There we go. I just wanted to know how dangerous it is. Because 20 feet, I'm like, is it broken bone territory? Like, it's dangerous how high it is. It is broken are. bone territory. If they take a bad spill, it is death. I'll do a parkour spin flip. <laughs> <laughs> we can solve the Nicholas problem really quick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Amazing. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Can you imagine if Nicholas died and, like, Jody and, like, Glenn had to, like, deal with it together, like, sharing their grief of this kid they both shared but didn't know? Dang. Like, it's like a film. That's like a it, this Sundance. <laughs> okay. Here it comes. Well, yeah, you go off and write that, <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> Am I close enough to the bird to be able to leap to it from the ledge? I would assume yes, It would be right? a pretty intense leap because it would be an upward leap because the bird is sort of above you. You could leap onto the spider and then climb up to the bird, but if you want to try to leap directly onto the bird, you can. It'll just have to be a pretty dank acrobatic. Check. Jimmy, like, Daryl will give you a boost or something. We could use something to make it easier, right? Yeah, could we do a boost? That's great. Yeah, if Daryl gives you a boost, you'll get advantage for the roll. Okay, so I'm going to whip off my belt. Well, you have to ask if I'm going to boost you. Yeah, it's a consensual <laughs> boost. Don't just assume. While whipping off my belt, I'm going to stare at Daryl and go, can you give me a boost? I go, go fuck yourself. No, of course I have boost. <laughs> What would you do if when I went to boost him, I just threw you over? Oh, my God. Oh he my just God. jumped and I into look, the ground. And I look at Glenn. I go, problem solved. <laughs> no, okay, okay, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Of course, I'm not going to do any of that. Okay, yes, of course, Daryl's ready to save the kids. Daryl gets down in that, like, remember Army of Two, that super awesome game? And uh, one of the co-op moves you could do yes. is lift each other up yeah. like in that pose. That's what the only way I know that pose. It's been 50 years. <laughs> So with my belt in one hand off to my side, I back up and I'm going to run towards Daryl's army of two pose, <laughs> also known as just hands clasped together down on the knee. I'm so upset that we made an army of two reference on this podcast. I quit. Not just one reference, Will. And I'm going to jump and I'm going to attempt to grapple the bird and swing my belt around its neck to try and control its flight. Okay. I roll 24 athletics for my boost if that okay. helps. I feel Holy like that's shit. what I would use. So I actually learned we don't have to do the thing where you guys roll to make the helping happen. You just help and if I feel like it makes sense, it just happens because somebody pointed out mathematically I'm not doing anything because two rolls to help somebody get two rolls is the same as just one roll in general. So we don't have to do anything. Uh, interesting. So you're going to have to roll Jimmy acrobatics with advantage because okay. you're getting this boost from Daryl. I may only need one that rolled a 19 on my first Ooh, roll. Wow. And uh, per the rules, I rolled a 91 on my second one. Ooh. Does that cancel it out? No, it doesn't at all. We just take no. the better one. Okay. So with the 19, you successfully launch off of Daryl. You soar through the air and you grab onto the feathery neck of this bird. It is going to take another roll of some sort to see if you can loop your belt around its neck. Okay. I'm going to roll a sleight of hand because I have a bonus, but also because I'm not actually trying to handle the animal. I'm trying to just like get this around it and like trick it basically when I smack into it through the thing. I, I would say that's definitely the handling of an animal. You were attempting to handle yeah. its movement. Well, I don't think Jody actually understands. And I think this is going to affect what happens. I don't think he understands what he's doing. He just knows that he's getting on something, and if he puts something around it. Just because you don't understand what you're doing doesn't mean you're not doing it. Ignorance Jimmy. of the if law like, is not podcasting. I'm podcasting right now. Podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, fuck it. Give me animal handling. All right, fine. I will roll animal handling. Fuck you, 18. Wow. Oh my God. Nice. Jesus. Okay, so you successfully whoop this belt around the thing's neck, and you're holding on to it really tight. It is going to have to deal with that on its turn, but it's still holding on to the spider and it's just like, ah, ah, Glenn ah. from underneath goes, fucking, because I loosened it up for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is now Ron's turn. Ron, who's like not very visible on an ailing Henry's spider belly, is like, Okay, so really quick, guys, what's the plan here? Are we trying to get out? And then I know that I know that we were concerned about being shot. You're saying at this while maybe. you're dangling. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna hold my turn. So Ron is going to hold their turn. Daryl, it is now your turn. What's your clever boy plan? So whatever the race that I chose for Daryl, I have gotten spells. But wait, sorry. 50 fucking three episodes into this shit and you're <laughs> telling us spells. you have spells. <laughs> I think I got them like last level, to Are be fair. Okay. Me? 
Okay. I'm going to do Augury, which I'm going to call it, uh, what would Frank do? So I'm going to say that this is, since I'm calling my father, I'm essentially thinking like, what would Frank do in this situation? Okay. I get to ask the DM the specific course of action that you plan to take within the next 30 minutes. The DM chooses from the following possible omens. Wheel, woe, wheel and woe or nothing. So good result, bad result, good and bad result. Results that are especially good or bad. So you're essentially supposed to tell us what you think the results will be from what we do next. So if you're asking me how does Frank's spirit feel about the goal of climbing up out of, through the roof? Yeah, I'm like, Dad, I, this seems pretty dangerous, or should we just take that furnace? The Rock was a good movie, but it's pretty dangerous. We don't got Sean Connery. If you were here, I'd feel like better about this, but what do you think? So Peyton turns to you and he's like, I'm right here, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the same, Peyton. <laughs> Second of all, I think if we get up through the roof, like that might be okay, but A, they're going to shoot at us, and B, unless we find a way to kill or befriend the stupid bird, it's going to probably like pick us all off one by one. It doesn't look good either way. Let me put it that way, my friends. I want to leap across a little bit of the gap. So like, you know, I'm going to leap from the balcony and land on the other side and I'm trying to grab whatever bit of the poop web that is out from Henry. It's okay? just a mm -hmm. web, man. And then I want to do the helicopter from the Matrix. I want Henry to <laughs> let go and I'm going to wrap the web around me and hang on so that they drop down and dangle, you know, like six feet above the ground. You can certainly get in position for that, but somebody's going to have to make that bird let go because the bird's talons are what is keeping Henry there. So Ron's up there. Can't Ron do something? Maybe Ron tickle that bird or something just in time. So like, can yeah. we plan this? <laughs> <laughs> That's the most I feel like, like <laughs> all right, so so I'm gonna do this fucking cool ass matrix ass <laughs> bullshit. I'm gonna hold a bunch of people, it's gonna go slow mo, it's gonna look super fucking cool. Uh Beth, I guess you can tickle a bird. I don't know. <laughs> or stab you it. Figure it out. No. I know what I'm doing. You guys know what I mm. like to do. I'm more about tickling birds than uh, <laughs> Right, right. My right, argument right, for right, the right. bird I don't think would be like against the idea of dropping this thing to its death. It's not like the bird's like, oh, they're getting free. This plan makes sense. Ron, are you okay with that plan? I am. I mean, I am. <laughs> All right. So, Daryl, you, go, every fucking you time. go first. Do your acrobatics check to see if you can leap through and grab that rope. After Jody ran and leaped off, <laughs> Daryl's inspired by this and also by talking to his dad. And he goes, Army of Two, now it's time for Army of One. <laughs> and I step back. <laughs> you. And I no run. one said Army of Two in character. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl loves this game. Daryl. So I do athletics. This is athletics, right? Because I'm just leaping. Uh, I, it's acrobatics because it involves leaping. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 19 plus one. You Great. see it. I see All it. All right, you describe it. I leap and I grab onto the web and I swing across the web like a fucking Indiana Jones. I land on the other side and then I wrap it around my forearm and I go, Ron, let, let him drop, drop the spider. <laughs> Ron, let him, Man. let him drop the spider. I love that quote. Bro, wow. have you listened to this podcast called Dungeons and Daddies? That's it's got like the best lines. Like it's kind of an action podcast sometimes. It's like, one -liner. dude, this last episode had this really Beth, cool. I get it. I'm ugly and I'm not good at one liners. It's not like Spider-Man 2 where they're pushing Tobey Maguire back. They're like, careful, careful. Don't let him drop the, with the, 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 the drop the spider. Don't drop that. Here's a fun fact you might have not have known. Since this whole thing is a big reference to The Rock, we actually got Quentin Tarantino and Aaron Sorkin to punch up Matt's dialogue. And that's what they came up with. Wow. Okay. So. Okay. Fuck me. This run. <laughs> Is going. Is he gonna drop that spider? I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> drop the news, Ron. Come on. Okay, Ron is gonna sort of slither his arms beneath the talons of the bird oh, and boy. then punch up so that is like Wolverine. Uh, oh yeah, uh, right. Right. Uh, just right. You his got Wolverine, Wolverine cosplay, cosplay paper Ruffles. shredder go right into the <laughs> bottoms shit. of his feet. Sees. Okay, so you can make an attack roll. You can roll sleight of hand. It's up to you. <laughs> I like the idea of rolling sleight of hand. Like you stab somebody in the chest, you go sleight of hand. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I got a 24. Yeah. Oh. Yes. All right, describe Let's what happens, go. Beth. Okay, Ron's hands are like the sentient versions of <laughs> the nail from A Quiet Place, like right up Ooh. into his footsies, wow. and that's what happens. That's great. So the rock goes... <laughs> And uh, oh, let's wow. go. Oh, God, what wow. a voice. Let's go of you. And the spider, along with the two children and Ron, falls uh, toward the ground. So, Daryl, give me a strength save. That's what Daryl's here for. Let's go, Daryl. That's what he's good at. And I got advantage on my strength. Seven. <gasps> 
Six and then seven. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Okay, I have a thought of what happens if I don't get good bardic inspiration. So I roll a d10 the one now. D10, yes. Yeah, to add to it. Oh god. Yeah, before you roll, I'm going to tell you what you're going to try to beat. So I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to cheese this. You have to beat a 15. And okay. you have a seven. So you need. Oh shit. You need an eight or higher. Okay, so oh I my need god. Eight. Thirty percent. There's a thirty percent chance here. I'm nervous. Sorry, I actually selected ten d10s. That's how nervous you that are. That might be good. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> I got an eight! Oh, oh, my, god. God. oh my god. Oh my god. I totally blew up my mic there. I hear amazing. Glenn's beautiful oh voice in my head. Like, it's about to rip off my arm. And then I just hear Glenn's rock and roll music in my heart. And I just think about the Predator and the high fives he wouldn't get with his son <laughs> if I drop <laughs> Nicholas right now. And I hang on tight. All right, awesome. So Henry and the kids, uh, you, you <laughs> managed to hold on to him, stop their hard landing. And they are basically just dangling like a foot above the ground now. So Henry can at whatever point just dislodge the web yeah. and they'll just be on the ground. Okay. So now is your turn, Henry. All right. Henry is going to de-spider <laughs> to dislodge from the spider. So Great. I turn back into Henry and I go, ow, ow, <laughs> ow, 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 God. The oh moment money. he drops and his weight gets off my arm, I also go, <laughs> when Ron steps off of Henry's spider, he tries to do the like the retracting the claws, but obviously they're just like on his knuckles. So, so he just says like snicked out loud because that's what it is in the comic book. <laughs> Glenn and Jody are both on the rock, the big bird. Goddamn right we are. Dads of a feather <laughs> flock together. <laughs> Glenn is holding on to the tufts of feathers in the front of the bird. Jody is on the back with the belt around its neck. Daryl, you're holding on to this web that on the second floor and on the ground floor, the spider, uh, Henry, Ron, and the two kids are basically dangling one foot above the floor. Henry is going to say, oh, thanks, Daryl. Oh, give me a second. Cheese Louise. And then I'm just going to cast Cure Wounds on myself at the fifth level because I have no health left. Great. I got 27 health back. Glenn, it is your turn. Okay, so <laughs> I look down and I see that they've dropped and I look up and I see Jody doing the thing I wanted to do in the first <laughs> place. <laughs> and I shout up to Jody. I'm like, get this thing under control. I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm going to try and climb up and also get into like a straddle like position as you well. You want to get into a competing animal handling oh position? Yes, exactly. God. I want a competing yeah. animal <laughs> handling position. Is he behind or are you in front of me? <laughs> Big spoon or little spoon? Or are you facing yeah. me? <laughs> yeah. Don't fall for it. It's a trap. <laughs> I feel like it should be a 50-50 roll if you end up behind him or in front of him facing him. <laughs> so do an acrobatics roll, first of all, to see if you succeed or not. And then we'll do the 50-50. <laughs> Nine plus eight, 17. Okay, so that succeeds. So now roll any dice you want. If it's evens, you're going to be in front of Jody. If it's odds, you're going to be behind Jody. I uh, rolled the d20, which gives me a 17. That's an odd. So you're behind Jody. Jody is now <laughs> embraced in your asymmetrical but very strong grip. And Jody, you feel so safe, <laughs> but only on the left side. Damn. What? I don't even know more about this. Now that you're there, what do you want to do, Glenn? I want to try an animal handle because he's got the belt around the Jody. neck, right? <laughs> yes, yes. You can still. <laughs> You could like ghost it and like put your hands over Jody's hands on the belt and like. <laughs> is there an animal handling check? Is there like a world where it has like a leash on it? Sort what if of, or the a rat is controlling you? That's controlling. Oh, the God, there's so many other layers. Jody, it's controlling the bird. <laughs> an animal handling check, I feel like, would allow you to certainly exert enough force that it feels like you've got it at a disadvantage, and it could probably either follow very simple instructions because it's scared you're going to strangle it. Or it will try to like buck you off if you're unsuccessful. But it's not going to be like be your friend or anything. I just ask what's the end goal? I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I want to have control of this bird so that we can use it to either get out or I can pick you guys up or whatever. All right, so roll animal handling. <laughs> Eight plus one, nine. And I go to Jody. I'm like, let me show you how this shit's done. You do it even weaker than Jody did as you try <laughs> to pull the belt taut against this thing. And the bird just bucks back and forth. It is now the bird's turn. It is going to try to shake you off of its back. So both of you roll dexterity saves to see if you can stay holding on to this thing. Nine plus eight, 17. That'll do it. You managed to stay on. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I got two natural 20s in a row. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, my God. Are you fucking so. kidding me? Have I been able to outroll Jody once so far? No, I don't think so. Holy I think literally shit. not once. So I feel like Glenn is like, whoo, whoo, and it's like holding on to like make sure he stays. Like, whoo, whoo, and then Jody like has a sense of like, oh, is he? Was he, I didn't even feel he was moving. Oh, my God. What's going on? It's all in the hips, huh? Yeah, you just see me jockeying. <laughs> okay, so it noticed it could not swing you off, so it's going to flap its wings and then, like, try to slam its own back into the wall to try to squish you. I'm the one behind you. I'm going to be the one taking the brunt of this. Yeah. 
Luckily, I'm in armor, though. All right. So it only rolls a 14. That doesn't beat your armor, does no, it? No, it does not. So it like goes back and tries to crunch you against the wall, but your armor absorbs a lot of the blow. Although I feel like it's still squishing your armored hard body against its body, which means that Jody should still probably have to. Against my body, You probably right? still get the wind knocked out of 14 you. 14 beats my AC, but I don't know if it changes because it's going through Glenn. No, I'd say it was just, uh... it's like, um, you know, those Newton's cradles. Yeah. You see the momentum <laughs> yeah. transfers through hard <laughs> objects all the way right, to the right, end. Right. So absolutely. So it rolled very badly. So you only take seven damage, Jody, okay. as you're crushed against the, this bird. And that was his whole turn. And I whisper in your ear, it's only because I absorb some of that damage for you. <laughs> All right, Jody, it is now your turn. Okay, so I am going to do the exact same thing Glenn did, but better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So what's the role here? Animal oh handling? Oh, boy. This is going to be a while. <laughs> okay, I got 17. Okay, so with the 17, you pull that belt taut. You can feel the bird's back straighten. It realizes you are in control and you're not getting off of its back anytime soon. Okay, I'm going to whisper in its ear. I'm your daddy. Oh, God. The horniest podcast. You, sorry, what did you whisper? <laughs> what did he whisper to me? I'm your daddy. Okay. <laughs> that changes Jody's character so much. I literally don't know what to do with Jody anymore. <laughs> hey, he's feeling it, man. He's been having some real dad issues internally ever since Glenn came up here and said that he was somehow Nicholas's yeah, I guess, dad. Yeah. And he yeah, there's a needs lot. to maintain a little bit of control here mentally. So the bird, which as far as we can tell, probably doesn't speak English. It doesn't understand the words you're saying. Animals but, understand uh, tone, so it thinks it did you understand want to have tone. sex with <laughs> it knows that there is something going on. It's not going to fuck with you. It might fuck you. <laughs> it basically mm. sort of goes like, oh, and then tries to land on the second floor of the prison because it's not sure where you want, but it has a feeling it might want you to let it off. It might want you to let yourself off. Jimmy, you should see if Sly Sylvester can speak to animals. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where Sly went. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll perception. <laughs> to see if Sly's around. Yeah. Roll a 10. You don't see Sly Sylvester. But you could hear from beneath you grabbing onto the undercarriage of the bird. You could hear Sly Sylvester's voice going, don't screw this up for me. Don't It was about to fly out. I'm down here right by the butt. Nobody can see me when I'm by the butt. You're ruining it. I yell to Sly. It's a bad idea oh, to fly no. out. Sly, can you talk to this thing? Of course I can. Well, tell it that we'll give it all kinds of rewards if it gets us out of here. But I didn't want it to know I was here when it went. Oh, you, got, you ruined everything. Okay, okay. And uh, are you lying when you say we're going to give it rewards? Or are you telling the truth? We're telling the truth. We'll reward this bird handsomely for getting us the fuck out of here. Okay, so hit me with a persuasion check. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the check for it a higher difficulty than normal because it's being filtered to the bird through Sly. But you're still okay, the person making the argument. Oh, He's the translator. Like you. You're going to have to beat a 17. Dang, so you're saying I have to roll higher than a 3? Well, I did. So 6 was 14, 20. Oh, my God. The bird goes... And it like narrows its eyes. Sly goes, I think it might be receptive to the idea, but we're going to have to move quickly. Like how many people are we going to have to take out of here? So two children, a Ron, a Daryl, and a Henry. According to this website, a uh, rock can carry 7,000 pounds. <laughs> okay. I guess your mom's out of the question then. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh okay. my god. So the bird goes squat, squat, and then Sly Sylvester says back to you, it thinks that it's going to be in a lot of trouble if it's seen to be hobbling a bunch of fugitives out of here. They'll probably hunt it down and kill it or something like that. If you basically find a way to convince it even further, I'm not going to let you do this, but just one successful check is what I'm saying. I'm going to say, you get us out of here and we will reward you with riches beyond your wildest dreams, and we will protect you because we're the baddest asses in this whole land. All right. Ever heard of books? <laughs> <laughs> Got a yeah. whole cast. <laughs> <Wrong chimes in. laughs> it's the perfect bedding. <laughs> Freddy rolled a favorite with advantage because Ron said, have you ever heard of books? Daryl's like, finally, somebody fucking cares about a castle and it's a bird. So I rolled a one on the first one. Ooh. You rolled a one? On the first one, but I have advantage, right? Yes, thank God for Ron. Okay, so I have 10 plus 14, 24. Holy shit, Ron, you saved my ass. <laughs> wow. So you hear the bird say its first word in English as it goes books <laughs> and it leaps down onto the ground floor <laughs> and turns into the library <laughs> and extends a wing to the rest of the group so daryl looks at the rope burn on his arm he goes oh okay so we're we going back up we're not going down <laughs> <laughs> you go, okay well just come pick me up on the way up i'm, I'm right here i'm on the second floor still so just whenever just come get me i assume everybody piles onto the bird the bird comes yeah. up to you extends its wing to you daryl you climb aboard 
it flies upward. The ballistas see that it's flying upward with a bunch of people on it because there's been an alert because somebody specifically said Glenn Close is around. So all the ballistas are on alert and stuff like that. They are going to make three shots at this bird before you reach an altitude such that it can't hit you anymore. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh, sorry. Can I cast Conjure Animals? Okay. And here's what I want to do. I want to conjure a decoy bird. Okay, cool. How many animals can you conjure? I can do two beasts of challenge rating, one or lower. (laughs) I'll just (laughs) have a vermin and put some bats out there. Yeah, just some chaff, you know? Let me explain. Okay. That's fine. So what the guards see then is they see a massive bird that's yes. got seven people on it and then two very small birds and then two very small bats. Three, Three bats. bats. It's Three a bats, giant sorry. vulture. It's how big is a giant uh, vulture? The rock is 20 foot by 20 foot. It's a gargantuan size animal. It's so like it carries 7,000 pounds. It's like yeah. a dragon. So almost <laughs> indiscernible from like random bits of dust that had like been swept <laughs> off of the rock as it like exited the tunnel, essentially. But I'll say that you've increased the creature's AC by one with all that distraction. As we go out, I would like <laughs> to the cast. the stupidest thing I've ever thought of in my life. <laughs> well, like the ballistic guys going, which one do I shoot? The tiny <laughs> one or the one with all the people on it? What the fuck was I thinking? Yeah. I'd like to cast, if I could, Anthony, on my way out, yeah. I'd like to cast Hypnotic Pattern. Okay. So the idea here is that as I'm going out, I assume that these ballistas are, are manned. Yes. By people. They are. So on my way, I have one last like set of like Roman candles, like bootleg fireworks. So I'm gonna try and like mm. shoot them off the bird. It's going to be a hypnotic pattern that swirls inside the 30 foot cube. Every creature who sees the pattern needs to make a wisdom saving throw. So if Jesus. they don't, they're charmed. Okay, so there's three ballista. One of them, one of the guards saved. One of them, both guards saved. And the third one, one guard saved. So what I'm gonna do is the ones where only one of the guards saved, I'm gonna have them fire at disadvantage and the other ones are going to fire normally. First, a ballista is going to shoot at you with disadvantage. <laughs> it got a 20 and a 1. So a natural 1 malfunctions Ooh. the ballista, and it just, like, shatters. Nice. Oh, you know what it is? It's not designed to be aimed back and up like that, so it causes a malfunction nice, on it. Nice. That's great. The second ballista is going to fire at you. It gets a 17, which is higher than the AC of the bird. So the bird is going to take... These broken wings. 56 damage. <laughs> 56? <laughs> Last one is going to roll to disadvantage, and it gets an 18. So the bird itself takes 92 damage oh, as shit. two massive ballista bolts just oh, poof, poof, no. into its body. Oh, no. One of the ballista bolts hits Sly Sylvester. Sly Sylvester is <gasps> turned into goo. Sly Sylvester no. is just no. gone. Oh, oh, no. Sly. Sly. Immediately. Snaps, Sly. Anthony. Snaps. Oh, danger. We warned him. We did warn him. The other him. ballista is going to go through the stomach of the bird and I'm going to roll. So how many of you are on this bird? We're going to roll a basically see if any of you get hit. Nick Payton and the five of us. I have danger sense. Okay. You know, you you play enough uh, sports. You got that sense when a ball's about to hit you in the back of the head or whatever. So you got. Am I right? We've learned about (laughs) Daryl. I have advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see while not blind deaf. Essentially, if. Okay. Yeah. So there's 70 of you. So I rolled a D7 basically and assigned each of you a number. So I got a three, which means I've rolled that the bolt is going to come out on the other side and impale Ron. So I feel like I'm very dexterous as well. So I feel like I (laughs) could have fucking done something. I mean, you could definitely sense that this thing is coming at you, Ron. So Ron, you can roll a dexterity save. What Daryl would like to do, since he senses the danger, I think he was tracking like a a lot of catch. Like you you can track the path of a flying object. So Daryl's watching this thing and he sees this going towards Ron. So he'd also like to dive to help uh, Ron. You'll give Ron advantage. Okay. Nice. I got a 17. You barely managed to dodge out of the way as the uh, the sharp pointy end of this bolt exits uh, through the back of this rock. So the bird is like, <laughs> and keeps flying up into the sky. It eventually gets very cold. You could feel that you were high above, like you're all, all your cares. The world looks so small from up here. If only we could all get along. Our ears pop. Our ears, <laughs> ears pop. Everybody chew, keep chewing. You feel yourself descending far away from the Meth Bay Correctional Facility. While it's up here, it sees a castle seemingly made of books with books on the parapets. Mm-hmm. And it feels like the, like the bridge oh, coming no. out of it is like an open hardcover book. We did tell about the books. <laughs> it goes, books. Yes, yes, yours, buddy. That's yours now. And it lands right outside Book's castle and it goes, Books? Like in a questioning tone? Yeah, it's yours. Well, I guess in those books now. It's yours? Yeah, it's his. (laughs) And I put a comforting hand on this bird and I go, Yes, my friend books and I turn to the group and I say, (laughs) and to be clear, this was we 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 escaped because of me. Uh, not him. <laughs> I did this. 
This was my plan and it went perfectly. Right? Right, Nick? It's it's Nicholas, first of oh, all. Fuck. <laughs> and second of all, mm. I saw my dad pull the belt around the neck oh. of the creature. So once again, I don't know why you're inserting yourself into a conversation between my father and I. I think we can all agree it was a team effort and we did a great job as a team. Let's all put hands in the middle. Oh, I love that. And Daryl puts his hand out. So yeah, we're here. We're out of prison. Let's take five. We're here at, I guess this is Book Castle. This is pretty cool. Why is Glenn keep saying he's my dad? Daryl just quietly to himself since he said team effort, but everybody ignored him. He just goes, doodlers, and he just... I'm saying I'm your dad because you're my son. (sighs) Why does it feel like everyone's looking at me like I've gone crazy? What's happened here? You haven't gone crazy... Gone crazy. <laughs> How many years did you spend in there? Nick is not your son, Nicholas. Nick, Please, you keep calling him Nick. is the only reason I was able to last as long as I did out there. And now I'm coming out here and I'm finding oh, out that no. something's going on here and you guys are doing some kind of prank or I don't like it. Okay, I'm going to take a shot at this uh, and I'm going to... This is it's time to rip the bandaid off. I think there are some books about like family therapy in the castle or something. Just if you need, <laughs> no, that's that's not a mom thing. That's a Beth thing. You could tell Glenn, and maybe I can take Jody aside and explain it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm yes. just wondering okay. if. Oh, you do your way. I'm just not sure if seems like a lot. And poor Nicholas is right here. Well, I'm not going anywhere. I, I need explanations. This is creepy. I don't feel like we should be hanging out with this Glenn guy if he's gone this weird after being in in the clink. Whatever you can tell my dad, you can tell me. All right, my dad Jody. What did you guys do with my son? So here's what happened, Glenn. If okay, Jody. Oh boy, I'm getting stressed out. I'm just gonna just give me ten seconds to do a quick breath, and then I'll be right with you, boys. <sighs> okay. All right. Hey, I'm just going to whisper a little bit just because I feel like that might keep us all a little (laughs) lower temperature for what I'm about to say. (sighs) When we took Glenn to trial, it wasn't because he was a bad friend. It's because he was a bad dad to Nick. And then when he got just then, I know you're confused, but let me finish. When he got found guilty of being a bad dad, the sentence was that Nick would no longer be your son. And then when we came back from the trial, Jody, you were like just there. And Nick was like Nicholas now. We knew we had to get Glenn out and we all knew this moment was coming. We were going to have to deal with this. I I know it's a pretty rowdy situation. And so now uh, I've told you and this is now your family business. So I'm (laughs) Back away. <laughs> yeah, Jody, from our point of view, we just met you when we first came back from the trial. I think we did a pretty good job of acting like we knew you, though. <laughs> but then, Nick, what do you remember? Nicholas turns to Jody and he says, Dad, I think they all, they're all under a spell, or this is a trick, or they're all body. This is really creepy. Maybe plan Foxtrot Bravo and he takes a cylinder out from his pocket, and you can see, Jody, that it is a flashbang that you gave to him a long time ago for massive emergencies. I'm going to look at him, and I'm just going to go, be brave, son. I'm going to look to the group and go, guys, I don't know what is happening right now, but I think there's something seriously wrong with all of you, and I don't know what happened at the courthouse, but none of what you're saying makes any sense. And I'm going to grab the Foxtrot Bravo from Nicholas's hand, and I'm going to chuck it on the ground while turning Nicholas away, and we're going to bolt it for Book's Castle as I throw it. The flashbang explodes. Uh, Everybody give me a constitution saving throw. 11 plus 1, 12. I got a natural (laughs) 1. Oh, no. I got a 20. 17 plus 3. I have 14. Okay. Everyone except for Daryl, you are blinded and stunned. The sheer noise of it. You don't even know where you are. You're so disoriented. Even this flashbang going off. Could I have hugged Peyton to protect him? In his uh, eyes? Oh, yeah, that's very cute. Um, and then also Peyton will see. I'll be like, be our eyes, Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm hugging Peyton to protect Payton, him. Yeah, Peyton's completely ensconced in the little cavern of man flesh <laughs> that surrounds him. He uh, He's the only one that sees that as the flashbang explodes, Nicholas and Jody run across the drawbridge leading into Book's castle. And just for a moment, Nicholas looks back over his shoulder and with a look of concern and confusion and a little bit of fear, you can see him look just at Glenn Close before he turns back and they keep running and they disappear into the dark recesses of Book Castle.
Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson. Anthony Birch is our DM. Will Campos is Henry Oak. Beth May is Ron Stampler. Jimmy Wong is Jody Foster and myself. Freddie Wong is Glenn Close. Our theme song is All Right by Maxton Waller. Courtney Therond is our content producer. Ashley Nicolette is our community manager. Chad Ellis provides additional editing. And Robin Rapp is our transcriber. It's not just us. We also have a legion of Patreon supporters who help make this show possible. People like Aaron Thompson, Dave, it's just Dave, Nick Jensen, Sean Scott, Sean Badger, Matthew Connolly, Charles Lynn, Allison Marvin, Sierra Bumgarner, Austin Huntwork, Alex M, Sean Teeter, Dan Gentz, Brianna Clark, Jonathan Colin Rodaway, Kachance, Marcy, Bryce, David Johansson, and Chandler. That Patreon is at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. And here's a little tidbit for both our patrons and people interested in our Patreon. If you go to our website, dungeonsanddaddies.com and click Patreon at the top, you can see all the Patreon content in one handy place. There is a lot of stuff on there. If you're a patron, it's a nice, easy way to find links to the back catalog. If you're just window shopping, you can get a sense of all the stuff that is available to you. Entire one-shot campaigns, bonus content, our after show, Talking Dad. Do check it out and consider supporting us directly, patreon.com slash dungeons and dads if you're a fan of our dumb ad reads we also posted those dumb ad reads at dungeonsanddads.com you can click on ad reads at the top so i don't know bookmark it if you're thinking of getting like a mattress or a meal delivery service or something and use one of our codes you can check out our merch at fit.ly slash dad merch in all caps follow us on twitter dungeons and dads reddit.com slash r slash dungeons and daddies thank you so much for listening our next episode comes at you march 23rd we will see you then There was a time when you could read between the lines You know they never brought you down Never brought you down Okay, now, I don't want to even take a turn. I want Beth to go because I'm nervous. (laughs) (laughs) Freddy's back. Guys, what am I supposed to do? My time is up. I'm going to die soon. I know something's going to happen. TikTok, TikTok, Jimmy. (laughs)